This video tutorial is going to be covering the custom shape functions here inside Photoshop Elements and some of the things that we can do uh, with those custom shapes. Now this is going to be a two-part series because there is a lot to cover and understand. But once we understand all of the options, you're going to discover there's going to be a lot of very fun, creative things that you can create. Um, and it's going to be very easy to do using our custom shape tools here inside Photoshop Elements. So with that said, I think we should just go ahead and get started and show you some of the different options. So your custom shape tools right here inside Photoshop Elements, the keyboard shortcut is the letter U and it consists of several tools. The rectangle tool, the rounded rectangle tool, the elliptical tool, polygonal, line tools, and of course your custom shape tool and the shape selection tool. Now primarily we're going to be covering these two last tools. These other tools are useful in creating a vector shape but that's basically their only purpose is to create a rectangle, create a rectangle with rounded corners, create an, an oval or a circle, create a polygon, or create a line in a vector format. Now, of course, the advantage to using a vector format is, number one, there's lots and lots of vector shapes out there in the world that you can download for free, and a lot of ones that you can purchase that are amazing as well. But the, the advantage of working with a vector shape versus like a brush or something to that effect is the fact that we can scale the shape layer that we create to any dimension that we like. So we can scale it down, then we can scale it back up, we can scale it up even more, we can scale it all the way back down and then back up again. So you have that full range of motion that you wouldn't have if you took a brush, a very high resolution brush. Brushes inside Photoshop Elements can only be 2500 pixels. So you are somewhat limited in the size just in that there is a limited pixel count. But if you were to take that brush in its full resolution, scale it way down, and then turn around and scale it back up, you lose all of that um, uh, resolution when you scale it down, and then you turn around and scale it back up, it, it's not going to look very nice. And that's not the way it works with custom shapes. So enough of that, let's go ahead and dig in. So we're in our custom shape tool. If we come up here to our options bar, these are the default shapes that come with Photoshop Elements. Now I'm going to add a couple of shapes for this exercise that we're going to do. And uh, I have a few shapes that you'll be able to download off the download section on the website. There is a link in the in the uh, video description. It takes you right to the website to download these custom shapes. Or you can go to elementsdesignerdigitals.com, click on the downloads link, and you'll find a link to these shapes. Now, there's lots of ways to add custom shapes here inside Photoshop Elements, but the easiest way is just double-click on the file. I got a file here on my desktop. You can't see it, but trust me, it's there. I double click on it, and by the magic of video, there they are. These are the three shapes that we're going to be using for the exercise. So let's go ahead and take our first shape and just drag it out here into my documents. Now, here is the key point when we're working uh, in creating something with multiple. Uh, shapes. We're gonna, in our in our second part. We're going to take all the principles and actually make something. Okay. So in this first part, we're just talking about the principles. But what we're going to do is we're going to take multiple shapes and make a new custom photo frame out of multiple shapes. And in Photoshop Elements, we don't have the ability to take multiple shape layers and merge them into one layer. Anytime that we create a shape, no matter what type of shape we use anytime we're using one of these uh, shape tools inside Photoshop Elements we get what we call a path that's what we see here around this little block it's a path and we can manipulate paths individually but there's no way to like take multiple paths and mash them into one new shape layer in Photoshop we can do that but not here in Photoshop Elements so with that said the next time I go to add my next shape I have to hold down my shift key. That's the first principle. Holding your shift key while on a shape layer, if I hold down my shift key, I can add to an existing shape layer. See how I've added the new path to the word senior 
onto my existing shape layer. If I were just to click and drag the word senior, it would actually create a new shape layer. So by holding down the shift key, we're going to add to an existing shape layer. Let's add one more piece to the puzzle. So again, hold down my shift key. Notice that the cursor, there's a tiny little plus icon. Once I click and drag, I can now let go. And I still am going to have that plus icon. So I've let, let go of my shift key at this point. If I click on my shift key again, notice it constrains that shape to the original proportions. If I let go, watch what happens. Boom. See, it gets nice and wide. Hold my shift key down, and it snaps back to its original proportions. Okay, so now we've added another path to the shape layer. Now, we can interact with each path by switching to our shape selection tool, and each path is independent of one another, which of course is going to be very useful when we do our editing process. So each path can be manipulated individually. Now, in addition to adding to an existing path, we can take away. So for example, um, if I go to my rectangle tool, I want to trim away a small piece of this photo block over here on the left. If I hold down my Alt key or my Option key on a Mac and click and drag, watch what happens. Notice that part of that photo block is kind of hidden, if you will. And that, in certain circumstances, it can actually be quite useful. Now, what I actually have here is I still have this is a separate shape. So, but if I move this particular shape, here's what's interesting. I've always think, you know, the way the way this works in the background. If I move this back over, watch what happens. See how it takes away? Now, watch this. Let's move it back over again. And this is why I think it's so interesting. I, so I moved it back over again. But if I choose this option right here, add to shape area, watch what happens. Notice now it's filled. And as I move it over, nothing happens. So I can actually change the property of a shape kind of on the fly. Now, this probably doesn't mean anything to you at this point, And it's really not supposed to. Um, just understand that we have the ability. Um, and, and, and once we actually put all the pieces together and make something, you're going to like, aha, I see what he's talking about now. Now that makes sense. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to delete that path because we don't need that path for the rest of the demonstration. A couple other things to point out. So we've seen how we can subtract, we can add paths to one layer. We can subtract paths from the layer. Um, and we've seen using the basic function of the shape tool that we can interact with each path individually. Okay. Now here's the thing. Up here, when we have the shape selection tool selected, we have options. We could choose the combine option. And when you combine a shape, watch what happens. If I just click combine, boom, nothing. Nothing happened, right? Actually, something did happen. And what happened was, is originally, we had three individual shapes. But now watch what happens when I click on the word senior, for example. Notice how the paths of all everything is now selected. Before, I could interact with just the word senior by itself. Now there's no way to do that, OK? So, that, so we actually took three individual paths that happened to all be on one shape layer, and we've now mended those together. Okay, so there's no way to interact with them independently of one another. And in certain circumstances, that might actually be useful. In this particular circumstance, it's not. Okay, we still want the ability to interact with each one of these independently. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this word senior. Notice I undid the combine option, and I'm going to resize it a little bit and place it over the top of my square. I'm going to resize it so it fits, and maybe I'll even rotate it. What the heck? You know, you, you try different things. You never know, right? So now we can't really see it very well, but I have the word senior on top of my block. Now what I'm actually going to do is show you another option here. So I'm going to select both of those paths 
right? Because I'm still in that shape selection tool. And I'm going to choose the first option is to add to shape area. So if I click that option, nothing really happens. Um, if I choose the next option, which is subtract from shape area, right? I kind of get this like inverted effect which, you know, that's not really what I wanted at all. I have another option here, which is intersect shape areas. That's kind of weird, um, but let's click on it and see what it does. So see what it did? It actually got rid of everything but the word senior, which has kind of a weird effect. It's not at all what I was looking for. Um, and then finally, the last option is the exclude overlapping shape areas. Now here's where it actually, you know, this is something we can use because as soon as I click that, watch what happens. Notice how the word senior actually gets cut out of uh, our main photo block and it creates this kind of cool effect. And so that's pretty cool. But one thing to keep in mind though is that path from the word senior is still a separate path. But as soon as I move it over anything, see if I move it over here, Notice over here it seems to have no effect. It doesn't cut through this path, right? But as soon as I move it over just on the edge, notice it cut right through that path. So isn't that kind of cool how Photoshop Elements kind of keeps track of? So this will have the exclusion part uh, on, th on the photo block, but not over here on the flowers. So it's kind of, I know, it's kind of interesting how it all plays together. Now, here's the other thing that's kind of cool, um, is that when we move the word senior over our photo block, obviously it's designed to exclude, which can have a really cool effect. To see this maybe a little bit better, if I change my background color to something different, watch, watch this. So I fill my background, something color is a little bit different. Now I take my, uh, go back to my shape layer here, take the word senior, and as I move over, you see what it does? It cut through the red block so I can see my underlying background color. Now watch what this watch what we can do now. So what I'm going to do now is you see I have the word senior. I'm going to choose the uh, basic first option which is to add to shape area and then when I move it over my block notice now it doesn't cut through. So it's very very cool how Photoshop Elements kind of keeps track of all the different properties of that particular path. Now this may all be really, really confusing, but once you see how we're going to use all these options in building something, it'll all make a lot more sense. The point to this video here was just to kind of warm you up to a couple of options and how these tools work. Okay, so now that we have the understanding of the basics, remember the most key thing is hold the shift key down to add a, a one path layer on top of another. We hold the alt or option key for you Mac folks if we wanted to take a path and subtract it from another path on a shape layer. And then we found that we can interact with each one of our shapes in, or paths independently. Um, by coming into that shape selection tool and depending on the different effects that we're looking to create we could choose one of these options and move paths on top of one another so that they interact with one another in various different ways. Now we've got all the basics down now let's take a look at part two where we're actually going to take these design elements and create something kind of cool and bring all of our basic knowledge together so we can make something that's totally unique and I think you'll find it's it's a really neat exercise so take a look at part two and thanks for watching